kind of been on a theme. Uh, we've been on a theme about life in all its fullness. Jesus' words in John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and life in all its fullness. The reality that the majority of us as believers stop before the end. I have come that you might have life. We've received new life and kind of most of us are just kind of hanging on until the end. But what about the promise that he has come that you might have life in all its fullness? And so last week, we are in 1 Corinthians 6, where Paul's reminding the people of Corinth and us today that our bodies are no longer our own. They were bought at a price, meaning that we no longer belong to ourselves. We belong to God. We are not free to do with our bodies as we please. We now have a responsibility to glorify God with all of our being. Our eyes, our mouths, our hands, our feet, dedicated to honoring God. And it might seem like, well, how, how is that full life? If I don't have freedom to do whatever I want, how is that full life? But the reality being that, it's a, that living in that way, living unto our desires in the world's way, is actually remaining enslaved to the sin nature, enslaved to the God of this world who is Satan who controls us by sin until we've been made new in Christ Jesus. So now we are actually free for those of us in the room who are redeemed. You are free. You are no longer enslaved. But one of the key points of last week's message that I want to emphasize this morning, one of the key points of last week's message is that, yes, we belong to God, but the second part of that uh, that message was that we also belong to one another. So we have a responsibility to Christ with our bodies and how we live and with our being, but we also have a responsibility to one another. We now belong to a body. Romans 12, 5 says, In Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We belong to one another. We belong to Christ. We belong to one another, forming one body. This is the makeup of the body of Christ. All these different parts in this room, all of these different members making up one body. And of this one body, Christ is the head of the body. Christ is the head of the body. We see this in Ephesians. Ephesians 1. Chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head, speaking of Jesus, the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fulfills everything in every way. So God gives all authority to Christ and places him as the head of the church, which is the body of Christ. And each of us is a portion, a part of the body of Christ. I am not the body by myself. I am not the body of Christ all alone. You are not the body of Christ all by yourself, all alone. Together, unified, we make up the body of Christ. And so this morning, my prayer for us is that we are encouraged by the Spirit. We are challenged by the Spirit of God growing in our understanding and practice as a unified body. Not as independent members, but as a unified body. And so we're going to be back in 1 Corinthians in chapter 12. If you want to turn there, you want to tap to there, if you just want to look at the screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul provides a helpful, familiar, very familiar to uh, for us uh, illustration to help us better understand how this many-member body functions. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse 12. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit 
to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Verse 15, now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Verse 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has, placed, has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. For if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that our hearts and minds are open to receive your word today. I pray that that by the power of your spirit, truth is illuminated. Understanding is illuminated. Revelation is seen, Lord. I pray that we are beginning to be transformed this morning, that we are becoming new this morning. I pray that the words that I share, Lord, that they would be of your spirit and not of my flesh, and they would build up your church. They would glorify you. They would encourage, equip, and challenge, Lord, where necessary, only where your Spirit can do and only how your Spirit can do it, Lord. We trust you today. We open our hearts and minds uh, to be transformed this morning. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So I read a lot of text there, so it's going to take us a really long time for me to walk through this whole passage. I'm kidding. I won't go through all of it line by line. Let's just start in the beginning by paraphrase. People got, must have got really nervous because it was really quiet there for a moment, thinking we are going to be here until three. Let's just start by paraphr- paraphrasing verse 12 to begin. Just as the human body has many parts that form one body, so it is with Christ. This is a key to understand. It is both the body, us, people, here. It is both the body and Christ that make up the body of Christ. It is the body and Christ. As we read in Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, Christ has been appointed the head of the church, which is his body. He is the head. We are the body. So just get this clear really quick. No one in here is the head of this body. Of Christ. Christ is the head of the body. We are the parts of the body. Why is that important? As we know, the head of our body serves as the control center, does it not? Informing the rest of the body how, when, and where to move. It helps us processing, process what, what we're seeing in this very moment. It helps us to understand or to know what are we experiencing in this moment. The head is processing it. So it is with the church. We are the many members that make up the body under the headship of Christ. He's the head. We're the body. So it looks like this. It looks like this. Christ is the head. He informs the members of the body as to their purpose. He tells us why we exist. He tells us who we are, our identity. We get clarity, we get understanding from him. He tells us uh, what our 
purpose, why we exist, what our significance is. He tells us how to move. He tells us when to move, and he tells us where to move. He also tells us how we work together in harmony. These various parts are connected by various joints, how we work together in unity. Just as a little baby, when they try to to walk, they really don't know how all of the parts work together yet, do they? The head informs how the parts work together. And so think about that for just a moment. Think about our own lives, our own bodies. Our bodies don't go anywhere that our heads don't lead, right? It reminds me of the chicken with its head cut off. It really doesn't know where it's going, I guess. But without the head, we don't really know where we're going. If we don't have that, we have no clue. And so, likewise, if we don't look to Christ as our head of the church, our source of guidance, the body of Christ has no clue where to go, does it not? He is the head, we are not. So Paul is saying we are part of Christ. We are the body by which Christ functions in the world. Him being the head, telling the body how, where, when to function. But not as independent entities. Not alone, not independent, but rather as parts, many parts, of one body. And one point to, to not overlook. As we think about this one body, as we think about being brought into one body, there's all kinds of different people who've been brought into this one body. Ethnicities, distinctions, personalities, all of these different parts coming together. And so although we are distinct from one another, one of the things that Paul points out in this text is that we are now equal in the Spirit of God. In verse 13, for we all baptize by one Spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, different socioeconomic classes coming together. And we were all given the one Spirit to drink. And so although we come together today, the idea is not uniformity, it's unity. We're still distinct. We're still different from one another. We're still maintaining that distinction, but under the power of the Spirit, we can be in harmony and in unity as one body, although distinct from one another, maintaining our uniqueness, the complexity in which we were made. It still remains, but the inequality no longer exists. Every believer in this room today is equal in the eyes of God. That should be a comforting truth to hear for us. Then Paul goes on to detail how the body functions with its various parts. But something important that I want to point out as he does this, as he points out how the body body functions with its various parts, it's throughout this passage that we see him reveal two different mentalities that appear amongst its members, that appear amongst the parts of the body of Christ. And it's almost as if there was, and there was, a divine power that revealed to Paul what the struggle would be for the church today. The struggle for the church today is not much different than the struggle it was for the church of Corinth. And God reveals this in this text. So the first mentality that we see, these two different mentalities that we struggle with in the church as being parts of one body. The first mentality that we struggle with is a mentality of insignificance. Insignificance. How many of you ever have felt like you don't have a a role in the body of Christ? You don't have a, a role or a part to play. You don't feel very significant in the body of Christ. You don't have anything to offer. You don't have the right gift, or you don't have the gift that gets you up on the stage with the microphone in your hand. And just so that you know, like, just uh, me being introvert, my preference is not actually to be (laughs) in front of everybody with the microphone. It would probably be in the background where no one can see me or talk to me. So maybe you're looking at it, where does that gift fit? I don't see where my place is, and you might feel 
insignificant. Paul has this to say about feeling like an insignificant part of the body of Christ. In verse 15, he says, Now if the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. So just because something is seen as insignificant or felt to be insignificant doesn't mean it's no longer part of the body. So however important or unimportant we perceive our role or place to be in the body of Christ, that doesn't exclude us from being a necessary, important, functioning member of the body of Christ. Amen? We are an important part, no matter how insignificant we feel. Paul is implying that if you feel that way, if you feel like an insignificant part, sorry, I lost my place. If you feel that you are uh, uh, like you're an insignificant part, that you actually have been deceived. You actually have been deceived. That doesn't mean you're no longer part of the body just because you feel like you're not a significant part. You've actually been deceived because just because you don't have the function of another part or a prominent or preferred role doesn't mean that you've stopped being part of the body. And as he continues in verse 17 through 19, he points out the importance of each member, of each part. The truth is that the body can't actually function with all of its unique parts. For it to fully function, it needs every part. He says this, if the whole body were an eye, how could it hear? Can you imagine that? The whole body of Christ, an eye, how would it hear? If we were a whole eye, how would we hear? If the whole body were an ear, how would we be able to smell? Each part is important to the full function, the completeness of the body. Not only that, but it also says in verse 18 that God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Just as they wanted, the, as he wanted them to be. That should be a confidence builder for you this morning in Christ. He's placed them just as he wanted them to be, each member. God divinely chose our role, our function, our contribution, our place in the body of Christ. So it could be said, it, this could be said about this. This is the way that my mind always thinks. It could be said that if we are dissatisfied with our role, our function, our place, what we've been given to do, that it's actually an indirect dissatisfaction with God. Why? Because it says that God has placed them right where he wanted them to be. So if we're dissatisfied with our role, we're dissatisfied with the place we've been put, it's an indirect dissatisfaction with the one who put us there. He's the one who's placed us where we are. You were made how you are. You were placed where you are in the body of Christ just as God wanted you to be. So what's the key here? that God's getting across through Paul. That whatever your role, however significant you perceive it to be, you are a necessary part of the body of Christ. And so if you came here today feeling like an insignificant part of the body of Christ, God sees you. God knows how you feel. And 1 Corinthians 6.15 reveals that he knew you would feel this way. Why he gave these words to Paul to write a very long time ago so that you would hear them today, this morning. God saw to it that you would sit in this room, you would watch this message to hear this today, that no matter how you feel about your place or your role in the body of Christ, that God has divinely placed you you there and gifted you in this particular way. What a comforting thought. What a comforting 
message to hear. I pray that as you hear this this morning, that the Spirit of God is encouraging you in your importance and in your role in the body of Christ. So the next mentality, first it was insignificance, a mentality that we struggle with as being a part of the body of Christ. We struggle with feeling insignificant. The second mentality that we struggle with is, is one of independence. This is one we really touched on, I think it was last week. So we struggle with insignificance, and we also struggle with independence. In verse 21, it says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. Again, the Spirit of God through Paul is saying each member can't function properly independently, all alone, but that each one requires another. That we are necessary parts belonging to one another. There are no parts that can be excluded from the body of Christ. And there are no parts that can fully function on their own. As I began the message, alone, by myself, I am not the body of Christ. I'm an arm, I'm a leg, I'm a spleen, I'm many body parts I can't think of, you know, I could maybe name a dozen, maybe more, sorry. But each one of us has a role and we can't function all alone. We need one another. Just as the human body relies on all its various members and various parts to function properly, the body of Christ is the same. Even the parts that we might not think of as necessary. Seen in verse 22, Paul goes on to say, On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts of and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment. God knew. God created us to be how we are. He knew there would be parts who would feel weaker and insignificant in the body of Christ. He knew there were ones who were going to have more of maybe a prominent role or a preferred role. He knew this dynamic was going to exist within the body. And so as Paul here is referencing the physical body, it causes us to think just for a moment. If we stop and think about our bodies, thinking about the vital parts of our body that are never seen, yet highly protected. They're never seen until maybe you get older and you have to start going to the doctor a lot and they start telling you about body parts that aren't functioning well. I only know this with my aging parents, you know. I joke that in their retirement stage, their, their life really is around doctor's appointments. That's what they spend a lot of time traveling and doing, our doctor's appointments. But there's all kinds of parts of our body that we never see. They're protected, they're covered, but yet they're vital to a functioning body. Are they not? So that these parts that are highly protected, highly valued, or that deserve greater modesty. Or there are parts that join together other parts to allow them to function. We know this about various joints and tendons. And so as members of the body to fully function, we are dependent upon one another. Sure, we can get around as this, like, I guess, body that's not fully functioning, and we can just kind of get by. If we're going to achieve the ends that God intends for His church, we're going to be united as one body, seeing our place as a part, not the whole, but our part and needed in the whole body. That's how we're going to fully function as the body. So whatever your role, whatever, however limited, however insignificant you feel that to be today, you are in need of the rest of the body. And the rest of the body is in need of you. We're needed to function as one body. Then as we continue on in this passage today, 
there are two key qualities. So first, these two mentalities that we struggle with, insignificance and independence. And then there are two key qualities that we see that God is seeking from this body, from this diverse body that's brought together in unity and equality. There are these two uh, qualities that we see, and they are unity and care. Unity and care. And when we pick up in the middle of verse 24, he says, But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there would be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, Every part rejoices with it. I think it's so interesting that God has given greater honor to these members of the body that lacked it. He knew there were going to be weaker members of the body of Christ, and he gave a responsibility for all members to look after the weaker members, to give them greater honor, to give them greater respect so that there would be no division. There would be unity. And so each of us, every person in this room has a responsibility to look after our various parts, to look after the various members in order to maintain unity and to care for the body of Christ. Each part is to have an equal concern for one another. If one part suffers, we all suffer. If one part is honored, we all rejoice. So unity and care, these two uh, qualities that we see from this text, unity and care flow from a fully functioning church body where each part is fulfilling its role and caring for each and every heart. And so, church, as our physical bodies, just as our physical bodies are made up of various unique parts, the body of Christ is made up of various unique parts. And so, if you're a child of God in this room today, you play a role in the body of Christ. You play a role in the body of Christ. If you if you think you've reached a point of retirement and I'm just going to hand it off to uh, the, the young guys, nope, you play a role in the body of Christ. In fact, you have seen and witnessed some faithfulness that younger generations have not yet been able to see. After decades of serving the Lord, after decades of walking through dark and troubling times, you've witnessed a level of faithfulness that younger people have not seen, and they need your presence even if your role is just to be able to share the stories of God's faithfulness. I endured it. I walked through it. I've been there. I know what it's like. I came out on the other side. The only way that's achieved is reaching an older age, having spent decades with the Lord. And so that you're not retired if you think you're retired. If you're young, you're not too young. You're still a vital part of the body of Christ. You're not a a lesser member. You're still a brother and a sister as part of the family of God, and you're an important part of the body of Christ. So each of us, I'm sorry, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Unique parts, the body of Christ is made up of all of these unique parts. You play an important role. You are an important, necessary member of the body of Christ. And today, if you're not a functioning member, if you look at your life and you think, I'm really not very active, I don't feel like a functioning member, then the reality is that the body's lacking. As I read this text, as I understand this text to reveal to us If you're not a functioning member of the body of Christ, present for its many parts and many members, then the body is lacking. The body's missing an ear. The body's missing a kidney. The body's missing uh, an ACL. 
the body may be missing some tissue between two parts that really don't need to rub up against one another. I'm reminded of, uh, of an occurrence we had recently with our pregnancy. I learned more about cerebral spinal fluid than I ever knew before. And there's a particular procedure that can cause your body to uh, leak out this, what's called CSF. And this CSF is actually this fluid that surrounds the brain, keeps the brain from, uh, I guess, kind of descending down on the, the skull or, or pr placing pressure. It's kind of keeping it floating in there. And so if this fluid is leaking out, the brain is actually settling down and putting pressure. Uh, yeah, it sounds really crazy, doesn't it? And so the only way that pressure is relieved temporarily is to lay flat and so that the brain's not doing that And while this fluid is, is leaking out. And so as I was thinking about this message and I was thinking about parts and I was thinking about various things that we don't think of in the human body and we think about things that in the body create pain or friction that if there's not this particular piece of cartilage or this, this tissue or this particular fluid here, there's some lack of harmony. There's some tension. There's some friction. There's some pain that exists. Why? There's a missing part there. Anybody who knows, who's, I think it's, what is it, the, the MCL, it's gone. Oh, many people have had knee surgery. So it's bone on bone in the body. What is there? There's, there's pain. There's discomfort. And so each little part, as much as we would not think of it as being significant, Maybe that part is to bring greater harmony, greater unity, to relieve some pressure and some pain in the body of Christ. And so if that's you, if you look at yourself and you think of your own life, and I've not been a very active, functioning member of the body of Christ, the good news is this. God is patient. God is patient patient with us. Thank the Lord. He's patient, and I pray this morning that he's stirring your heart, that he's awakening your heart today. And most of this begins with just this, as we think about, well, how do I find my role? How do I step in? How do I become that presence for the body of Christ? How do I begin to step into that role? It begins with being present for God's people. If you'll make yourself open and available to brothers and sisters in this room or part of the church body. Because when you make time to sit in the pre presence of the family of God, you get to hear their story. You get to hear what they've walked through. You get to hear what they're walking through. You get to hear their pain. You get to hear their trouble. You get to hear their victory. And you'll soon discover your need, the need that, that this person has for your presence. You'll soon discover uh, the, the need that you have for this person's presence, why they've been through that storm, they've been through that difficulty. And so although that role might seem small, might seem insignificant, it's necessary, it's important, it's a vital part of a fully functioning body that's going to emphasize and, and have the outcome of unity and care. And so because you are a member of God's wonderful church with a specific role in its function, know that you are not an optional piece. Everyone, if you are a believer, if you are a follower of Jesus in this room, you are not an optional piece peace, you are a necessary peace. You are a necessary part of the body of Christ. And as a fellow member of Christ's body, I'm just a part too. I only play a small part of the body of Christ. As a fellow member of Christ's body, we need you to function in the way God created you to function. This isn't a message for me to try to get you to serve more in the church and serve in this area. It's not at all. Because that, I, I, I firmly believe that this is a, maybe I'm, well, I don't think I'm getting on a soapbox uh, to, to emphasize this.
but it's not all about how we get active and how we do things here on Sundays or any other days of the week. That's limiting the power of God's church. That's limiting the power of the body of Christ. That's limiting the beauty and the effect that the body of Christ has on uh, our church community and our community at large. But seeing ourselves as a spirit-empowered member of the body of Christ, participating in the family of God, taking that presence with us out into the community. That's our part to play as a member of the body of Christ throughout this community or whatever community that we live in. So we have a role. It's not always just functioning in here each uh, week, serving in some kind of capacity. It's being there and being present for the people of God. And this ties directly into what I've been sharing for weeks, this theme. That's why I opened up and shared it just for a moment. This theme we've been on for several weeks, part of living the full life, living life in all its fullness, a completeness, a satisfaction at the core of our being. I love to emphasize that because it's the thing that we're all lacking. It's the thing that we're all searching for. No matter, no matter what journey, no matter what place of life we're at, we're all searching for a life that is full, that doesn't feel empty, that doesn't feel like something is missing. And the blueprint for that is here. But a part of that in God's Word, in, when I say here, in God's Word, part of that, part of living a life in all its fullness, living the life that God intends for us to live, living into the fullness of, for which we were created is functioning. It's found in functioning in your role as a member of the body of Christ. This is a component of that, living life in all its fullness. If you want to live life in all its fullness, trade in trying to function as a body for functioning as a member of a body. Rather than an independent entity, I can do it all on my own. Trade that in for I am a, a part and I am in need of brothers and sisters. I'm in need of an arm and I'm in need of an ear and I'm in need of this part. And those other parts are in need of me. Scripture is very clear on this subject. We weren't made to do it all on our own. We weren't made to do life all on our own. And so today, I want to challenge all of us, myself included. I want to challenge us to ask God to help us see our role in what He's already doing. What are you already doing? What are you, what's already in place? Where are the wheels already in motion? And what is my part to play on that? In that, I think it just begins with a simple being present, making yourself, uh, allowing yourself to be open, opening your heart, opening your uh, home, uh, whether it's literally, whether that's just figuratively, opening yourself up to the people of God. Hear the stories, hear the pain, hear the triumph. Be present for God's people. And so today, let's ask God to help us to see our role. Let's also receive from him that we are significant. We are important parts. No matter how we came in feeling, no matter how we've felt as a member of the body of Christ, we are significant. We are important. We are necessary to the fully functioning body of Christ. So ask the Lord, what am I to be doing right now? Maybe we need to even repent. Sorry, Lord. Forgive me. I've not been doing this. I've now been made aware of this, but now I'm going to make a commitment to be a part, to be an active part of the body of Christ. Amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we're thankful for your word today. We're thankful for your challenge. I pray that by the Spirit of God that we are encouraged where necessary, that we are challenged where necessary, we are convicted where necessary today, Lord. Do the work that only your spirit can do in our lives today and allow that to carry on through our week, Father. Don't let it end today. Don't let it die today, but let it to continue to, to stir our hearts, Lord. Help us to see our role 
in the body of Christ. Help us to, to function fully as a body of Christ, to care for each part and each member, recognizing that there are lesser members or weaker members that need our attention, that need our care, Lord. Help us to be attentive and give us a heart that is softened for those people, Lord, that we would encourage them, we would build them up, that we would let them know that they're an important, vital part of the body of Christ. We're thankful that you've given us this body to belong to, to help us be more complete, to help us walk through this difficult life, Lord. We're thankful for the this gift of new life, but also this gift of fullness of life. Help us to see it with clear uh, vision, Lord. Help us to open the eyes of our heart that we might see that path, Lord, to receiving and living into fullness of life. Be with us as we go through this week, Father God. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be blessed today. Go in peace. Hug a neck. Say hi to somebody on your way out.